You've probably used animation schemes before, but just to go over it very, very quickly, we can access it either from slideshow menu and down to animation schemes, or we can use the task pane at the right hand side and get animation schemes from there. There's a whole range of schemes, clicking on any one previews what that'll do to your slide. The way this works is we can apply it to, by, by clicking on that link actually applies it to the slide that we've got selected, or we can apply it to all slides, or better still, to add to the master. What this does is adds animation to the preset placeholders based on the slide layout. That does not give us much control. To get more control, instead of using animation schemes, we use custom animation. Again. That is on the slideshow menu or using the task pane at the right hand side. But for clarity purposes, I'm going to start a new presentation with a blank layout just to make it nice and easy to see. Custom animation works on any object on the screen. Um, I'm going to get some clip art. We'll have a picture of a car down there. We'll insert that onto the slide. So I've got a picture of a car. I'll move it fairly across to the right hand side. There we go. To get an animation, we can use the side pane, the task pane, and choose custom animation. To make custom animation work, we first got to select an object for the animation to work on. Once we've selected the object, then we've got access to the add effect button. Clicking on there shows you we've got four different types of effects, entrance, emphasis, exit, and motion paths. We'll look at each one in turn. First of all, I'm going to add an entrance. There's a few options there, but if I go into more effects, it gives us more uh, variety of, uh, of effects to use. Every time I click on an effect, it previews in the main window what that effect will do. Some are more interesting than others, of course. I'm going to use fly in for this. And then OK. And you'll say, why fly in? Well, because I can fly in from any direction. So across here at the right hand side, I can choose the direction that it's coming from. I don't want it to fly in from the bottom, I want to fly in from the right. That looks good. We can also change the speed. So I'm very fast at the moment, I'll slow it down a little bit, perhaps medium. That looks better. Car driving in from the right. Let's add another effect now. Emphasis this time. All works in exactly the same way. I can click on one and it shows me in the main window what that emphasis will be like. Some are more obvious than others. I'm going to use grow. Yep, that's the effect I want. Click on OK. You can see how we're building up um, a series of events to happen to the object. The first step was to come onto the screen. The second step is to grow. So the next effect we'll add is a motion path. Or do an exit yet, I'm going to motion path. And this is where I can send the object in a certain direction or draw a path. And that's what I want to do. I want to draw using Scribble, because Scribble allows you to draw anywhere on the screen. And I'll basically take my pencil and draw the path that I want the car to take. That's looking good. And then I'll add another effect, the exit this time. Again, more effects. You can see the effect of all these. See what it would look like. But I'm going to choose um, fly out this time. And OK. I'll change that right hand side to fly out to the left. So I can click on play and see what that's looking like. Let's add another image to this presentation. So I'm using the task pane to choose clip art, um, and we'll choose this lady here, this businesswoman. Put her at the bottom of the screen. I want to add a, an animation effect to make her walk diagonally up the screen. So now I've got her selected, I can choose back into custom animation. 
and add an effect to this new object. I'm just going to do a motion path and I'm going to get her to walk diagonally up towards the right. That's the right kind of idea. But can you notice this arrow? I can click and drag that arrow to make it go in just the directions that I want it to go. Try that. That looks almost right, but the problem there is the car drives past and then the lady walks afterwards. So what I can do now is alter the uh, the order that these animations work in. I don't want the lady to walk past. I want to walk when the car stops. So you can see we've got animation number five selected. That's number five on the lady. And I can use this reorder button to change the order of the animations. So I've put it before the car actually flies out to the left. Let's see what happens there. Car skids to a halt. Lady walks past and the car drives off again. Finally, you can add sound to your animation. So again, it's about choosing which animation to add that to. I'm going to add it to animation number one. And I can use the drop down menu to choose effect options. From effect options, there's a few things for you to have a look at. You can do that by yourself. I'm just interested in the sound. There's no sound on it at the moment. There's a few previous sounds already in the system that we can use. If I've got a sound on my own computer, I can choose other sound. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'll just choose one that's there just to show the effect. A couple of little extras here. Just because we've added an animation doesn't mean that we have to keep it. I've decided I don't like the grow effect, so I can remove that. Coming over here into my custom animations task pane. I've got the on click row shrink there. If I just click on it, then I can remove with the remove button and it takes that out of the animation. Now, if I run the slideshow, you'll see when I click on my mouse button, the animation starts. Clicking it again, the next animation happens again, the next animation, and click again for the final animation. That's a bit tedious, so we can automate that a little bit. Going back to my animations. I've got this start bit here on click. So my first option, sorry, for my first animation, I'll leave that on start on click. But for the next animation, I'm going to get it to start immediately after the previous event. And I'll just go down and change all those after the previous event. After the previous event. So now when I run the slideshow, I need to click my mouse to get things going. But then with no more mouse clicks, everything else happens automatically. That's a really useful effect. If you wanted more control over that, you can do. You can go into timings and adjust things to do with how long it takes for these various events to happen, but um, I think that's a little bit complex for what we need to do.